Tulsa, Oklahoma, home to the world's highest population of Tulsans and the 918 area code. A few years ago, in a downtown park, a work of public art sprouted up and invited people to stand between the 9 and the 8 to be the one. Now, with the COVID-19 global pandemic spreading throughout the 918, city authorities have altered the original sentiment of the piece by removing the 8 and having it responsibly recycled for scrap metal. The new design invites Tulsans to not be the one in COVID-19. Don't be the one. Don't be the one. Stay at home. It's a dumb selfie that no one's going to understand anyway. Just stay at home and don't be the one. Welcome to the first episode of Anna Berry Unscripted Impact Edition with featured guests John Terry and Katie Dale with a surprise Zoom Bomb by Paul Benjamin of the Paul Benjamin Band with comedy shorts by multimedia artist and producer David Reed James with musical director Nathan Wright. Get ready for your host. Here's Anna. And Bella. Welcome everyone to Unscripted Impact Edition. So happy that you're joining me and I'm so happy to be back with my Unscripted series because now more than ever we really get an opportunity to make an impact. Even if it's in the comfort of our own home, we can still connect to others and make an impact. So this week we are talking about something super important, how the music industry is responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and the city and statewide and country shutdown and how we can still contribute to our musicians that we know and love, how we can keep creating the music that we know and love and the foundations out there that are really sustaining all of us gig workers out there. And so this is gonna be really great. Um, episode for you to watch and you're gonna learn a few things too. We've got an amazing group of people coming on board. We've got John Terry with SRO Productions. We've got Katie Dale with Red Dirt Relief Fund. We've got Paul Benjamin. And before I get to those interviews, we have a message from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by vodka and hand sanitizer, two essentials for weathering any crisis. Brought to you by OK Distilling Company and sold at your nearest Riley's Wine and Spirits. And welcome back to Unscripted Impact Edition. Joining me now is John Terry, the president of SRO Productions, and Katie Dale, the executive director of the Red Dirt Relief Fund. All right, John, let's start with you. You've been in the music industry for a very long time. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, and you know, how many people are saying that and like any industry you, you can imagine, it's uh, no, we haven't seen this. And yeah, I've been around a while. Um, I'm old, okay, you know, and, uh, <laughs> but never going back, uh, anything that would cause people from not being able to gather is, uh, of course, now it, it affects every single industry there is out there. And, um, but of course, from the entertainment business, you know, it's all about the gatherings. Exactly. Well, talk to me a little bit about um, the landscape of it all, because it seems like it's changing every, every day, every hour, right? So there's virtual parties, there's virtual concerts, and now there's no more virtual concerts. That's been shut down. There's maybe more um, smaller events. Tell us a little bit about what it's like now. How can musicians still stay creative and relevant and employed? And how can we as music lovers and supporters um, still support and make an impact? Yeah, you know, we're still in that process of uh, every, like you said, every single day. It's it's new information, it's it's new predictions, and it's, it's everybody making up their own minds as to what they can take from all the information that's out there. And thank goodness we all have things like we're working on right now. You think about this 20 years ago and without the internet and uh, oh my gosh, you know, uh, without the TVs that people are you know binge watching just for any form of entertainment right now. But then there's the people that are the creative ones and they're putting on uh, the shows, the live shows. Becky, and yeah, how you doing internet? I wanna start off with the team that I wrote last night. 
I wish I had more time just to keep up with that. I check in as many as I can uh, just to be supportive or, hey, there's somebody I always wanted to see. So it's given me that opportunity. Hey, John, can I put you on the spot here and say if there are some musicians out there who have some questions or maybe some ideas for some of these virtual shows, would, would you be willing to have them contact you or your team for some questions? Uh, and sure, brainstorm? and know that we're in the learning process on this too, but it's just like uh, working with you guys too. Everybody's figuring these things out. We've got some things going on all over the country that we're involved with that can be uh, utilized. And so finding a way to put talent to work, that's exactly, uh, players want to play. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, good time to get to know people. So, um, yes, if they can, uh, particularly if they can write me, send me an email, send me videos, uh, any of the things like you would, try and get a talent agent to to pay attention to you just send those things really good time to do that right on right on players want to play that's so true thank you john terry appreciate you and who knows what's going to happen with 2020 but let's hope for an awesome 2021 (laughs) all right thank you anna all right so katie dale the executive director of the red dirt relief fund um some really exciting groundbreaking things happening here it was founded in 2012 with Red Dirt Rangers, John Coop and all of them. Did you see that it would be this necessary, this important, this impactful back then as it is right now? Um, Anna, we really had no idea that, that we would ever be in a situation where everyone that's working in the music business in Oklahoma was impacted universally. Um, we fortunately have been around long enough that we had a kind of a process in place to implement an emergency grant program, which we did two Mondays ago. And we pledged $50,000 to assist musicians that were impacted by cancellations and postponements from COVID-19. And we decided to do that in $250 individual grant amounts. Um, to try to help as many people as we could, knowing that that wouldn't really be any kind of solution, but hopefully put some groceries on the table and kind of help people just take a a little bit of a breath while we try to figure out what's next. Um, And here we are, you know, almost two weeks later, and we're kind of still in the same boat. But fortunately, um, we had a, a, a big gift from George Kaiser Family Foundation, and we've had an amazing response from the community. And so um, since two Mondays ago, we've given away $100,000 to 400 music people across the state, working in every kind of job, in every genre. And I mean, these are people like, you know, we have artists from the Tulsa Symphony, from Life Church. We have uh, renowned hip hop artists. We have award-winning singer-songwriters. These are people that play BOK and Canes and, you know, all kinds of venues across our city, but across the state and the world, really. So, um, yeah, we had, it's been a wild adventure (laughs) and, you know, we're excited that we were able to mobilize so quickly, but it's also so devastating. So, you know, we're really looking to what can we do next? And again, it's not just for the musicians. I mean, I completely understand that too, but it's for uh, the crew, production, tech, all all the guys and gals out there that make the production and make the music happen for us all. So tell us a little bit about the future. Is this still happening? Can people still apply? Um, Can people still donate if they want to? Yes, all of those avenues are still open. The application is still open on our website and we're just kind of keeping a list as funds become available, uh, which we also know some additional funding is on the way. It's just not here yet. So as those funds become available, we're continuing to fulfill those grants. And you can find all that at our website, um, reddirtreliefund.org. Additionally, we now know that the stimulus package that was passed um, by the federal government this week is going to, for the first time, allow unemployment benefits for self-employed and 1099 workers. So that is going to be an opportunity in Oklahoma for musicians and gig workers of all types to apply for that benefit, which will be super helpful in, I think it's up to 39 weeks. So depending on how long this goes on, um, that's gonna be some funding that's available in addition to the one-time kind of universal um, payments that they'll be making, $1,200 for adult, $500 for eligible children. And those are based on 2018 tax returns. So I guess the advice we have while we try to figure all this out is hey paul i don't think anyone's ever told this to you but can you mute for just a second 
just for a second. What's that sound coming from? I can't hear you. Sorry, Katie, go on. So the main advice for now, we're, we're still, that's a fairly new um, development. So we're putting all of this information together and hopefully to have like a one-stop shop where artists and music people can go get all the information they need for how to apply. Um, what we can say in the meantime is if you haven't filed taxes for 2018, do that immediately uh, as soon as you can because that's how they're gonna start rolling out those one-time uh, stimulus benefits. And then you'll also need some kind of proof of income uh, in order to qualify or to apply rather for the unemployment benefit as well. Oh man, thank you so much for all of this because it's really confusing. I mean, I'm a, I'm a complete gig worker and I get it and it's, it's extremely daunting to actually hear it and then try to apply and figure it out. So thank you for explaining that and thank you for what you've done with this fund. I mean, it is so necessary because we know how much music matters, but we also know how much we got to just stay alive and stay afloat. And so thank you guys for all that you're doing. And we'll just keep, we'll keep um, getting informed with what you guys have going on. Do you have any concerts or any benefit concerts coming up? I know something got postponed. What's, what's next? Yeah, so our our next um, benefit show will, was scheduled to be Bon Children's Gypsy Cafe uh, at the end of April. And we are reimagining that. So we're hoping to still bring it to fans, but in a virtual way, clearly right. for safety precautions and because that's the way we're gonna have to do it. So um, stay tuned. We will, we're, we're, you know, this is our mission. We're on a mission for musicians and that doesn't change just because the ways we've done it in the past are going to change for a while. Right on. Well, thank you for all that you're doing, Katie. Okay, so Paul, welcome. You have been directly affected. You're an awesome musician, Paul Benjamin with the Paul Benjamin Band. Tell me, what, what are you feeling? What's life like for you right now? Well, essentially for uh, all of us uh, touring professional musicians, everything has been taken off the calendar and totally wiped out until at least the middle of May or the end of May. And what makes this extra difficult is this is the beginning of the uh, festival season. And so this is when a lot of tours get started and a lot of the higher paying festivals start kicking in. And as you know, many of them all the way uh, down through Coachella have been, um, have been pretty much canceled. And we don't really see a lot of reschedules happening on the calendar until about the beginning of August. Right, and we don't even know what's going to happen in August. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's, it's such a tumultuous time. Um, have you done the math? Have you kind of like looked up how much you've lost and how much you just... I, I don't think any of us are doing that just just out of self-preservation. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. If, if, if you want the favorite, if you want the favorite joke that's been going around, the best, the best meme about it was I looked at all the concert dates that are canceled and I actually saved $214. <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, okay, so are you doing virtual concerts? I know some of the, the smaller gatherings have been canceled. Are you doing some in-home stuff or in-studio stuff? Yeah, it's been interesting how this is just rapidly developing in just this downhill rolling avalanche of uh, things. At, at first, a lot of streaming shows were scheduled. We had a high-profile one at uh, Kane's Ballroom that was going to have John Fulbright and Jacob Tovar and the whole family, and it got canceled uh, recently. And uh, we were doing smaller shows at the Mercury Lounge up till then, and then uh, statewide, uh, we, we just claimed lockdown, or the city did, the city of Tulsa. And so those are gone. So now we're down to, okay, just, just us streaming from home, doing little small shows like that uh, from our house on our, on our own equipment and things like that. So uh, that, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, where it, there's there's been quite a flood of uh, musicians and you can see it all over. Hopefully people who aren't just music fans, most of the people that I've seen contribute to the PayPals and the GoFundMes and thank you very much. They're, they're, they're the great organizations and they're, they're also uh, uh, just really, really, really solid fans of music and I'm just hoping the greater public of large starts tuning in to these little shows and discovering new music. It's a great time to do that. 
It really is. That's a really good point. Tell me about you personally. Like during times like this, do you find yourself maybe more creative? Do you do you find this to give you inspiration to write songs? Um, are you practicing? What's what's kind of like your day to day like? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, my, my phrase I've been using with everybody is uh, I've never met a great musician that wasn't a great social distancer. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, anybody that's taken the time to get good at a instrument or uh, to hone their songwriting craft or, or vocal craft. Uh, yeah, we, we've spent a lot of time sequestered alone in tiny rooms and things. So, you know, uh, thanks to the Red Dirt Relief Fund and uh, other organizations and just many generous you know, uh, uh, people who have tipped over the PayPal and the, the Venmos and the GoFundMe, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling fairly okay about this coasting period and uh, I'm able to dig in and write new tunes and uh, explore areas of the musical map that I, I haven't got to go to yet. So, uh, yeah, everything's, everything's been all right with me. That's so, it's, it's, you know, looking into the future, who knows, it could be some of your best work, right, in this time where you get this. Oh, we're going to see a lot of creative output from almost every active musical project. So there's going to be this explosion. Yeah. Some people have actually, um, Scott Acock has uh, decided to uh, release his album just yesterday. Just I saw that. Available for download. So we're also going to be seeing uh, releases uh, from people who think now's the good time if you've already got a project in the can. That's true. Well, tell us, um, tell us specifically, and we will post this and make sure that everyone knows. But how can we, who appreciate your music, how can we support you and other musicians? Um, you obviously have Red Dirt Relief Fund and some other generous donors out there, but more specifically, how can we support you and our the other musicians that we know and love? Well, uh, the, the first thing to support just the musicians at large, uh, the Red Dirt Relief Fund, uh, going to that page, whether it's their web page or their donor page, that is a great place to go uh, because it's not only affected just the musicians themselves, but all the people in the industry. You know, I have so many friends. Uh, the guitar tech for Robert Plant had a large tour and he's down. Hmm. And then uh, the sound guy for Ziggy Marley, he's out of a tour and he was about to go to Australia. And so the, the thing about the Red Dirt Relief Fund is it's this blanket that helps everybody that's involved in the industry, the sound people, the tech people, and things. So I, I really can't say enough about the good things that they've done. And if you want to help the people at large, well, then go there. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, if you want to help the musicians out, generally when we're streaming from home, we'll post what our personal Venmo is, what our personal cool. PayPal is. And, 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 and that and, and I take some of that and I spread that out to everybody that's involved you know uh, my, my drummers my bass players uh, the people that I have with me on the rig that I cannot do shows without you know I, 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 I spread it out amongst amongst the friends that's awesome well that's what we got to do now I mean it's community collaboration now more than ever so Paul I see I know that 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 guitar is not just a prop on your lap is that is that something that you were planning on on using during this interview at all? Do you have anything that you want to play so we can close this this interview out with with some connection to your beautiful music? Uh, let's see here. Let's see what I got here. I think I'll do a tune uh, called Detroit Train. Laughing 
Music in general lifts our spirits and keeps us connected. Thank you everyone for all that you're doing. And thank you for watching Unscripted Impact Edition. I'm so happy to be here doing this and creating this for us all because now more than ever, we get to go out, live our lives unscripted and make an impact. Stay tuned for our next segment where we're gonna be talking about something else pretty darn important, which is our local farming and our local food industry. Thanks for watching. Next time on Unscripted, Impact Edition, Anna and Bella get down to the real ground for a special 50th anniversary celebration of Earth Day. We will meet some of the farmers and activists leading the way in solving the food desert problem in North Tulsa with guest appearances by super activist Katie Plohockey and permaculturist James Spicer and a surprise visit and message from Mother Nature herself. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to start making an impact. And remember, we are all in this together. See you all on Earth Day.